What do our professionals look for in a good candidate, especially in terms of the skills and attributes that they can bring to their business? And what do they think candidates can do to make themselves stand out from the maddening crowd? I think real clear commitment about what you want to do in the business. Um, something that stands out for us um, at interview and when you work within this business is a real passion for what we do. So a passion for what we stand for, our ethics, a passion for our values as a business and a passion for working actually or an interest in working within a financial services industry as well. Um, and actually I think my best advice to stand out in the application program is to be yourself. You know, to really understand what you want to do and to be clear about what you're looking for out of the career. Um, and being able to talk about what skills that you can bring to us in as a business. Something that actually has to be really, really inbuilt is a passion for working with people and working with customers. We're a very, very people oriented business. The vast majority of our people work within teams. So the ability to feel uh, comfortable working in that environment, to want to work with other people, um, and a real desire to deliver exceptional customer service because we know that if people are really keen on doing that, the output of that from our customers, people get a really superior service from us as well. To be a success within our industry, I think you need to be quite outgoing. I think you need to be enthusiastic, passionate and willing to succeed. And I think you need to have quite good communication skills as well so that you're able to build relationships with people. Um, apart from that, I don't think there's anything in particular that you need in terms of skills, um, just because you're taught everything that you need to know from day one so that you can do your job as, um, as well as possible. For, for, for teaching posts, we would look for somebody with uh, experience of, of the, the industry or the sector, um, and um, ideally teaching experience as well. Um, but um, teaching experience isn't necessarily essential. Um, I can remember taking um, uh, somebody on a year or two ago who had um, loads of experience in travelling tourism for example, hadn't taught at all but we, um, we were so interested in his ind industry experience that, that we decided to um, you know, appoint him and um, make sure that he had the necessary training and development within the college to, to bring him up to the standards of uh, the teachers that we employ. Um, that appointment's worked out really well. Um, and um, the, the particular person hasn't looked back, to, back at all. Um, we do employ teachers who um, have taught in other colleges um, and um, we'd very much look for how, how closely they match our person's specification really. Um, so that's really the, the um, key to it all. So looking for a good applicant in uh, corporate communications, we'd be looking for someone who's outgoing um, a good self-starter and someone who's keen to work in a very fast-moving department. A good applicant, um, I believe they need to sell themselves, show what they're good at, um, be specific in the experience they've got. Um, if you're not specific, the person reading your application or interviewing you won't, won't be that clear on what you've done. What do our interviewees have to say about both work and life experience? Just how important do they believe them to be in their line of work? Work experience is crucial, I think, um, and it's as important as, as qualifications, even more so, really. Um, there's, it's becoming easier as well to get work experience, and I think a lot of um, employers are, they are quite open about taking someone under their wing for, a, for a, uh, you know, a week or two, and it gives you an opportunity to get a feel for the industry um, and actually put something into practice and make a few connections as well. Um, it can be a place where you can get a reference um, and demonstrates your commitment as well to, to, to the role. So it's a, good, it's a good learning curve, work experience, and it's really valuable when you come to an interview because you've got something quite, uh, quite meaty to talk about, um, about what you've been doing. Um, so yeah, work experience is, is, is I would say, it's vital. Um, and I think if you're, say if you're a university student, I think you should really um, have a word with, uh, with uh, your course tutor or the careers department perhaps, um, because often uh, universities have programmes where they're connected to employers and you should be able to get the opportunity to work with an employer if you're on a degree course. Um, same with colleges, they're, they're, they're building links um, with a lot of employers. So there's plenty of opportunities to develop your work experience. I think in selection of candidates, life experience is really, really important. And we know that our customers 
go from joining us as an online banking through Smile at 18, perhaps with their first bank account, to an older customer who might have been with us for several years, who's 75, 80 or plus in some cases. And we have a very, very diverse customer mix. So life's experiences are really, really important in dealing with those customers. And some people are more comfortable dealing through the telephone, some people more through the branch network, and some people on a face-to-face -face, um, basis. And we try and ensure that actually not only we have different channels for people to access, but we have people with different skill sets um, who are much more comfortable with uh, interacting with what is a very, very diverse customer base. Um, we know that we're quite successful and very successful in some of our interactions with customers, and they respond well to the service that we provide to them. So this year alone, we've been voted by both the BBC Watchdog Programme and by Which as one of the best customer service providers. And in effect, the retail bank was the top high street bank for customer service. Work experience in the sector, uh, I have found to be very invaluable, uh, coming from a background where I've been working within one of our plants and now to have moved into the corporate communications role. It helps in my understanding of how our plants actually run and the challenges that our plant managers face whilst communicating with our employees. It also means I've got first-hand experience of who our audience actually is. Um, work experience is relevant, um, but not always necessary because on-the-job training can be given in most areas of the business. L life experience is very important. Um, if you've been involved in things like the Duke of Edinburgh Award Scheme, um, sports clubs, it can give you good transferable skills that will go into business, such as leadership qualities. If you don't have a degree, it doesn't always count against you. Just look at the winner of this year's Apprentice, for heaven's sake. And if you still don't take my word for it, let's hear what some of our experts have to say about it. I think if you've not got a degree qualification, it's no bar to, um, get, to having a, a satisfying career. Um, there, are, there are a lot of careers, that, particularly hands-on and practical careers, where you perhaps don't need a degree qualification, but you will be getting some vocational training on the job. An example of that would be apprenticeships, for instance, and that can be a pathway for some people that decide not to go through a route through A-levels into university. They can get some hands-on training, um, get in the thick of it really, um, and learn on the job. And there's a number of ways of gaining qualifications um, while not necessarily doing a degree. We can talk to people also about um, you know, a degree might still be an option for someone. Um, and I think callers that I've talked to, they're a little bit put off by the idea of three years full-time study and, you know, they worry about student loans because it's a bit uh, later in life for them and they have some responsibilities. What we can do is, is talk to them about some of the flexible ways that they can um, gain a degree. Um, you know, for instance, like the Open University or there are part-time degrees. Um, if that's not for them, then we can also have a, you know, have a think about ways that they can build a career through you know, uh, promotion and vocational qualifications like MVQs, for instance, national vocational qualifications. So there's quite a few pathways into you know, developing a career without having a degree. I think, as with a lot of people, the job you end up doing may be a job that you didn't know existed or um, you didn't know whether you'd be suitable for. I did um, a politics degree and when I left uh, university I ended up doing a, a temping job in an IT company, um, just in a, a secretarial role. Uh, I then moved on to do marketing and, and PR, which I didn't enjoy as much as I thought I would. And the company that I was working for um, in my temping job um, had a vacancy for someone in technical support which uh, I went for and got and from then on moved on to IT project management uh, and subsequently IT service management so have really fallen into a job that you don't as long as you, you like learning and you like learning new things and you have interaction with people and it can be quite pressured Obviously when a site goes down you have to make sure that it's, it's all up and running. It has a lot of skills that you wouldn't necessarily think your general IT jobs have um, and has been a job that I wouldn't have even known existed when I was leaving school or, or even a couple of years ago.